Okay, folks, I do hope you're well. And yes, I do need to have a shave. I will by tomorrow, I promise. No, honestly, I promise you I will. Right, what have we got on the showbiz front today, the news front? Mainly showbiz, a little, a little bit of seriousness there, but lots of it not. Right, let me go through a few things. A few things I've noticed on the TV today and in the press today, and also on the old social media today. Kyle Walker's missus, what's her name? Annie Kilner. She says she's finally decided to leave him. He's going to court. They're going to get divorced. They're going to be fighting over roughly £27 million. Pounds. I, bet, I, bet, I bet she'll put up some kind of fight there. We'll hold on to make sure she gets a good share of that. She is unhappy at that. What was the lady's name? We know it. We've heard it before. Lauren Goodman. She's been the third person in the marriage. And old Annie isn't too pleased with that. She's had enough now. She wants it all ended. But she wants a few quid on the way. Who can blame her, some might say? Who can blame her? I see they did something today on the TV for Linda Bellingham. I was surprised to find that it's 10 years ago this week that she died. I didn't realise it was that long ago. I remember it happening. I do remember only days before she died, she was in the Loose Women's Studios and a couple of them did a bit of an interview with her. She said she'd come off chemotherapy. She was happy to face death. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to leave her boys, but that was the way things were. That was the way the cards were played. I thought she was really, really brave. Really, really dignified. I mean, really dignified. I felt very sorry for her at the time. She looked a bit of a shadow of herself. You know, she'd lost a lot of weight and whatever else. Though the grey hair really suited her. Um, and it was just a really, really sad. She was only 66. She was the Oxo mum. Do you remember? Of course you do. Of course you do. She acted in loads of things, but she's probably best remembered for Oxo, to be honest with you. But yeah, great, great shame. Um, Carl, we've done a Katie Price. One of her exes, these loads. I had to write the guy's name down because I don't know one from the other. Carl Woods, his name is Carl Woods. Oh, Katie, I was with a fella called JJ Slater. JJ, oh, JJ, yeah. She's with JJ. Sounds like a guitarist in a rock band. But anyway, she's with JJ Slater. And Carl is saying, she's just using him as a sperm donor. She cares nothing for him at all. It's been put out there that she wants more kidneys. She wants 10 or 12 if she can. It's just another don donation of sperm. She'll have one with him and then move on to somebody else. And do you know what? Looking on past form, that might be the way it'll go, to be honest with you. And then it's a bit of a tenuous link here. Jay Slater. Jay Slater, he's the fella, the young lad, that died in that there Tenerife a while ago. Do you remember it? They found him down the mountain after weeks and weeks of searches. That absolute pillock, the pillock who went over there, you know the investigative uh, journalist who used to be an ex-copper and said he did, he's done a lot in the Madeleine McCann case. He's not done much there because nothing's really happened on all other cases. He went over there to sort things out. What was his name again? Wait a minute. Mark Williams Thomas. We've had him on the station before. Now, he's a pri prize one pillock. He is an absolute pillock. He said, I'll go over there. Give me three days. I'll have it all sorted out. He was there for two or three weeks. Got absolutely nothing sorted out. Nothing happened. Never found the body. Never knew whether he was dead or not. Knew absolutely nothing. He just kept getting his name in the paper on a daily or almost daily basis. That's what he's all about. He's a pillock, as I say. Well, over the last couple of days now, he said, I know the answers to this and I know the answers to that. He said, oh, there's lots I know that I've not put out there yet. Anyway, Jay Slater's mum, what's her name? Debbie. Debbie's come out and said, look, if he's got things to say, he's saying he's got all these things. He said nothing. Come and tell us, the family, or tell the police. If you've got any information, let us know, she said, because all this he's doing is he's sorting up a hornet's nest again, she said. All that we've had is social media, have people on there having a pop at us, people having a go all the time, and it's just stirred it all up again. She said, I don't think he's got anything information. I don't think he's got anything at all. I just think he's after some free publicity. She said, but if you've got anything to say, come and say it rather than saying in the press, I've got loads to say, and then zipping it, come and tell us what you know. She said, I think you know nothing, but I would like to know. Otherwise, shut your mouth. Pretty good advice there, Debbie, I would suggest. Pretty good advice. Um, you might have noticed, did you hear the other day about, uh, was it um, Mrs Brown's boys and old Mr Brown? Well, the fellow that, you know, that uh, voices her. Um, they got closed down, didn't they, for a while in the filming because of a racist joke that was told. Well, we heard this a couple of days ago and old Brendan, Brendan O'Carroll's apologised profusely and said he shouldn't have said anything or they shouldn't have said anything. He's, he's disappointed with themselves. He's very sorry, but now they're back filming. Well... The joke's come out today. Well, most of it came out as it was at the time. Yeah, what's happened is there's a bit of interaction. It's being filmed. It's being filmed. And this is the couple of lines. Somebody said something to old Brendan dressed as Mrs. Brown. And he's, they probably said something like, Oh, we like you, Mrs. Brown. You call a spade a spade. He said, Oh, I call a spade a spade. I don't. I call a spade a knit. And then 
one of the kid is in the show, one of us, I said, Mummy! You can't carry on with the nay, because the nay, the NI is just the start of it. He's saying he calls us Vader, and I, and I'm not going to say the rest, because I don't want to get closed down either. But what's happened is, everybody's supposed to have <gasps> took a collective sigh, and one of the people, one of the production people there has been that offended, they've quit the job. And obviously told the babe they've quit because of uh, Mrs. what Mrs. Brown was going to say. And I'm thinking, there, there you go, you've got an attention seeker, brought it to the babe, quit the job, and all of a sudden it's all closed down. Now I'm not saying old uh, Brenda should have said it, the joke or whatever else. Obviously it was well rehearsed. He wasn't going to say the full word because somebody jumped in during film and said, Mammy, along the lines of, you can't say that. Maybe it's a step too far in this age, maybe it is. But somebody quitting the job over it. If somebody says that word in my ear, oh, whether I want to read it or not, I mean, even if it offends me, I'm not going to quit my job over it. Absolute madness, man. So anyway, you've heard it here first, if you've not already heard it. What else have we got? There are other bits, there are other bits. Did it, did it, daddy, daddy, you know, old puff, did it, daddy, Sean Coombs. Is it Sean Coombs? Combs. I always want to call him Coombs. I don't know why it is. There's only one, oh, isn't it? Sean Combs. Yes, you may have heard that when they raided his place, as well as finding ammunition and guns, the bit that they found that shot people more than the ammunition and guns was the baby oil. Was it a thousand, a thousand bottles of baby oil? I think his briefer said at the time, well, Costco's only down the road and they sell it in bulk. Everybody buys it in bulk. Oh, ah, yeah, I've got 2,000 bottles of it in my back room there. It's taking up a big space, but it's cheap, isn't it? So you buy it in them kind of quantities. What a lot of cack. Anyway, it now turns out, prosecutors are saying they think they know what he's done. They think what he's been doing is mixing GHB that's the one they call the date rape drug, mixing GHB with the baby oil. So when they put it on the skin to do all the slipping and sliding and the, the sex videos and the sex things that he's, that he's doing, they're actually taking GHB in through the pores unknowingly, unknowingly, and fellas have been able to do what they want to do with the ladies because it's knocking the ladies out or knocking them, uh, well, like, I'm not making fun of it, but like Del and say Bandy, so they don't know what's going on, they don't know what's happening. That's what they're saying. I don't know if it's true. Don't know if it's true. Ni here's one. Here's one for you. Now, this, this one surprised me. Nigel Lithgow. You might remember last year we spoke about Nigel. He's being accused of uh, sexual misdeeds over there, over at Ponding, that there, America. He's the guy that's been on American Idol and before that, so you think you can dance and all that palaver. He did things over here. Was it Pop Idol and things like that? Anyway. He's gone over there, set up all these shows, and Paula Abdul, amongst others, have called him. And what she said is, oh, she said he's been a bad one. And I think it was about five or six years ago now. She remembers him. She saw him touching up or doing something inappropriate with one of the assistants on the show. Anyway, she had him, she had him brought to task for it. And I think it's all going to court and all that. And other people have come forward. And he's always said I'm innocent because they all say that. Anyway, I'm reading today. It took another turn. What's happened today is... Paula has now added to a statement what old Paula said is, and wait a minute while we're at it, I remember he actually touched me up, he touched me hips, he touched me buttocks, that's a bum, a bum, touched me bum, touched me breasts, tried to kiss me, put his arms around my neck, tried to kiss me from behind. She suddenly remembered that and Nigel saying, what's going on? She says this happened six or seven years ago with an assistant, she remembers that, I remember nothing, nothing, remembers nothing about an assault I've done on her. And all of a sudden, six or eight months later, remembers an assault I've done on her. He said, what person can remember an assault done on somebody else and not one on themselves? And then months later, he said, she's changing the statement. She goes along, she's making up as she goes along. I'm going to get done here by a woman that's making things up. Anyone that's been assaulted is going to mention their own assault before they mention anybody else's. And I've got to say, I know where it's coming from. And then... That, well, no, that's about it. I've done it all. I think, yeah, I've done it all. That's all covered, folks. That's it. That's the showbiz for you. That is it. That's as much as I can bring you, folks. Anyway, until tomorrow, if there's any more tomorrow in the showbiz front, I'll bring it to you. Don't worry about that.